I was one of those guys four weeks ago who thought all I need is a telephoto lens, a 400 or 600 millimeter lens, and then I could go out with my cameras and be a wildlife photographer. And well, it didn't work out for me like I thought. Uh, the lens is great, and the cameras work fine, but the wildlife. They're not as cooperative. They won't be still like a landscape or a building. They want to fly away and swim away and go under the water and behind the leaves and not as easy as I thought. And 400 millimeters, while it's certainly much more of a stretch than 250 millimeters, it's still only 400 millimeters. And even with a 1.5 APS-C. Put it in 4K movie cropping and pick up another 1.19 or 1.29. You're still only 600, 630 meters reach. You think that's a long ways, but not. So this is my opus. Two or three weeks worth of going outside in the evening times and in the morning times and trying to be the wildlife photographer that I imagined that I would be once I had this lens. And some of the shots were okay, and some of them not okay, but I learned a lot of lessons. I'm glad I got the lens, and I'm glad I took up this type of photography and videography, or at least gave it a try, because this type of stuff teaches you that photography is not that easy, and videography is not that easy. There's more to it than just the equipment. Oh, I could have a a 150 to 600 millimeter lens and I would probably have the same issues that I had with this 18 to 400. I need to be a better photographer and videographer if I want to get some of the shots that I see. Either that or I need to get a blind or something and sit for hours and hours waiting for a bird to come up on me. This blue heron has been my nemesis. He's hiding between this building and this tree in the grass, staring at me, waiting for me to leave. But this little rabbit, he doesn't give me any problems at all. The blue jays, they're a pain. And those wily mallard ducks who like to sit three, four hundred yards out from the shore, way out there, and mock me, yeah, that's what I'm used to. I also learned another lesson. CineStyle Profile on the Canon 90D in video. It's a great profile for video. Not a great profile for photography. A lot of the photos that I took here you'll see with the Canon 90D are photos taken in CineStyle Profile. I don't want you to think that the Fuji X-T4 reigns supreme over the 90D or that the 90D reigns supreme over the X-T4. But I do need to say, now in the top right hand corner is a snake. See that snake up there? And there he goes. That, folks, I believe is a water moccasin in my backyard. And then we've got some beautiful turtles. Anyway, back to what I was saying. The Canon 90D and the X-T4, they're both excellent cameras. Both of them have their pros and cons. I can say that I like shooting with the X-T4 better because I can use the EVF for video and photo. Um, and I also like color grading and correcting the Fuji files better than I do the Canon 90D files. But the Canon 90D puts out some awesome colors. Who could ask for more than this right here? A dragonfly floating on a flower petal in the lake right in front of me. It was like I set that up or something, but I didn't. Even the ants came out from the wood to check that beautiful, beautiful opportunity for a shot out. They're like, wow, look at that dragonfly on, on flower petals. And here's a pair of dragonflies on a piece of grass floating in the lake. There's a reflection and then there is the dragonfly. Yes, this is a great lens. The X-T4 is an awesome camera. The Canon 90D is a great camera. These are great combinations. You just have to go out and practice, practice, practice. Lots of mosquitoes here in Louisiana, y'all. The lens alone is not going to do it for you. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Check out my channel for other videos like this. And hey, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. See you next time.